Street preacher Dora Love goes to a gay pride parade, but things quickly get way out of hand. I'm going to let this video play out and then we're going to discuss it. And if you end up enjoying this clip, I really recommend you check out Door Love's channel down in the description below. Let's get into it. You're very angry. And you know why you're angry? Because you know that you are an enemy of God because you're in your sin. And that's what it comes down to. The Bible says he, he who loves the world is the enemy of God. You have enmity between you and God. Unless you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you are God's enemy. And and all God's enemies are rejected. They're cast out the outer darkness where they'll be weeping, rolling, and rushing the teeth. You see how calm and peaceful and loving I am? You see how angry you are? You know why you're angry? I am black. I am black. I am black. Why is he racist? Why is he racist? You fucking bigot. What does racist, what does racist mean? You guys need to go get dictionaries. I'm angry. Do something yeah. else. I'm trying to save your life. If you die, you're gonna go to hell. You're not Jesus. I'm trying to save your life. You're not Jesus. Black people. You're not. I do. I love my girl, but I eat her fucking pussy. Deal with it. You should. You should be black. Um. You. You know what's sad is that all you care about is eating vagina. Like that's what. That's what your life consists of. You see how sad your life is. Your whole sad. Your whole life. Your bones, your whole life will go around sex. That's sad. Your whole life was look how angry LGBTQ members are. You know why you're angry? Because you're an enemy of God. You guys are all making my point. You know that you're God's enemy, so you're getting upset. Now, what you have to do is repent of your sins. If you repent of your sins, you won't be so upset. You know why these two lesbians are so upset? Because they know that they're in the wrong. They know that their relationship is unnatural. And, and talk about, she's talking about two lesbians can't have a baby, first of all. And so, so it's not only it's not only irrelevant, it's confusion. Uh, God is not the author of confusion. What, I just want to know like, what is wrong about you know the LGBTQ community. Personally, I feel I grew up in a Catholic household my yes. entire life. I grew up Catholic. I grew up, I grew up going to church every day. Yo, if you fucking touch me again. You touch me. Get off, get off my speaker. I grew up going to church every Sunday. I went to a Catholic school from grades. From uh, from JK to grades 12, what's so wrong about being Catholic? You want to know? I'm not a Catholic. I'm sorry, I'm not Catholic. I mean, uh, LGBTQ. Okay, the Bible says the Bible. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. Bi the Bible says it's the abomination. The Bible says it's wrong. Do you care about what God says? Do you care? No, 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 no. Do I care about what God says? Do you care about what God says? Because these aren't these aren't my words. These are this is what God says. Didn't you know the Bible say? Didn't they say not to? Um, it's it's a sin to lay with um, children, right? They yeah, but I'm, once again, I'm not Catholic. We we disagree with Catholics. I'm I'm talking about Christian. I'm talking about Christianity. Christ, uh, so Catholics aren't Christians, first of all. I know that. Okay, yeah. So so what you? Okay, so what so what you're talking about is Catholics. Christians don't we, don't. we we don't have sex with children. Just to be clear, I don't agree with what he just said about Catholics. I'm sorry for all that Catholic brothers and no, sisters. No, I'm talking about in the Bible when they said, wasn't the Bible rewritten and translated thousands of thousands of times? No. Yes, it was. So, you know what translated means? Okay, okay, because it was written in Hebrew, there's thousands and thousands of languages. So it, it tends to reason that God would have it transferred into Mandarin, into Cantonese, into Patois, into English. So everyone has a chance to be saved. So that, that's logical. The thing is, God never said that it was a sin to be gay. That's he does. In 1 Corinthians 6, 9, in 1 Corinthians 6, 9, he says homosexuals will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Says where? Can I see? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. It says like, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of heaven? Do not be deceived. Neither you are. Neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor the coverts, nor, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. But also says such were some of you. So some Christians used to be homosexuals. Some Christians used to be drunks. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Come down. Come down. Come down. You, use the quorum. Some uh, and some Christians used to be sodomites. That's why we can stand here before you saying there's a better way. You don't have to stay a lesbian. You don't have to stay a transgender, and you don't have to stay a gay person. God can change you. So, yo, I just googled uh, Corinthians six nine. It said, 
Um, do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Yada yada yada. You know what I'm saying? And then it says, neither the sexuality or sexual, uh, sexuality, <laughs> immoral, nor, um, nor in homosexual offenders. Who here is a pedophile? Who here is a rapist or an abuser? You just said homosexual offenders. So everyone here that's a homosexual is a homosexual offender. Because sodomy is a fix of the God. So you know, you know, sodomy is offensive to God. Uh, so sodomy is offensive to God. If I was a guy and I bent you over, you know, if I had a penis and I bent you over without your consent, that would technically be a homosexual offender, no? Like, no. Who's who's done that here? Raise your hand. Who's 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 done that without somebody's consent? Okay. Let me, no, so nobody here is technically a homosexual offender, right? Let me show you how you're lying. Let, let me show you how she's alive. Is being homosexual a choice? It's being homosexual choice? No. Well, then that's rape. How? Because you're choosing to have sex. So are you saying you don't choose to have sex with a, with a, with a, with a man in his butt? That's a choice. You, and if it's not a choice, you're, you're a homosexual offender. You see how asinine what you're saying is? So, like I said, like I said, when God says a homosexual offender because he's saying that this sin of homosexual is offensive. It's offensive to God and it's offensive to mankind. You can't. You cannot reproduce. If it was, if, if everything was left up to the LGBTQ, what would happen is human beings would go extinct. It's a, it's a filthy act. It leads to diseases. I just wanted to say that I was a Catholic my whole life, raised from like elementary school, Bible camp, went to church, all that. Um, I think that God in the Bible says, "Thou shalt not judge your neighbor." For one. Uh, actually, that's not what it says. It says, "Love your neighbor." But it says, it says, judge not, least you be judged. By the same uh, by the same measure you judge others is by the same measure others will judge you. However, it also says, get the plank out of your eye, then you can see clearly to get the moat out of your brothers and sisters' eyes. So the thing is, I have gotten that the plank in my eye was, was, was unbelief. There was a time in my life when I didn't believe in God. So God has removed that plank out of my eye so I can see uh, clearly to preach to you guys so I can tell you guys to come home to Christ too. Um, God, no one's going to love you like, I know you guys, everyone is really just search, searching for love. I don't, I don't, um, I, I don't, I don't, I don't knock you for searching for love, but you won't find true love until you find God. The Bible says God is love. If I were to ask you what is love, how would you answer that? Love is like feeling light and you don't have any worries when it comes to that person. I don't think that's necessarily restricted to one religion. So love is feeling light. Yes. Love so when I'm on an airplane, I'm in love. Or when I take a lot of drugs, I'm in love. Like describe love. Describe love to me. Love is different for each individual person. Love for you. For everyone. No, but I'm just asking you. You describe love for me. I don't have love for you, sir. No, you describe the word love. Okay, so now we're going to break down some of the main points that just occurred in this clip to frame a respectful discussion in the comments. The young black lady from earlier, she raised a couple concerns about, oh, you know, the Bible's been rewritten and retranslated thousands and thousands of times. And it's kind of an exaggeration, but she she's kind of making a point here. And Dor Love, he's not addressing it precisely in the way she's asking. He starts talking about how, oh, oh, we got to go from the Greek and the Hebrew to English and Cantonese and all these different languages. But her question is more, her claim rather, is more the Bible has been corrupted over time. And this is not a true statement. I've covered this on my channel before. I'm going to link a video right up here for on the card for you to check out. I've done it before, but to summarize, there are a lot of scribal errors when the early scribes were making copies of the Bible, but we have so many manuscripts that we are able to identify 99.999% of these scribal errors, and the ones that we aren't able to tell, none of them impact a central Christian doctrine in the Bible, so it really doesn't matter for her point. Even famous atheist scholars like Bart Ehrman admits this. She also claimed that the verses condemning homosexual acts are really misreads of the text, but mean a condemnation against pedophilia and unconsensual sex. But this is a really common misconception. And what she's, I don't know if she knows what she's talking about here, but she's talking about the famous verse that condemns homosexuality, Leviticus 2013. I think there's another one in Leviticus chapter 18, but this one reads, if a man lies with a male as with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. And so the claim there is that the second word for male there is supposed to mean boy. So it'd say, well, man shouldn't lie with boy. But if we're to look at the actual Hebrew word there for male, it's zakar, which is referring to 
very specifically, but in the broader context of the male gender. So it doesn't matter whether you're having sex with a young male or an old male, it's still a general broad condemnation against homosexual behavior. I also noticed that Dora Love was arguing that if being gay is not a choice, then having gay sex is unconsensual sex. And I think he's employing some kind of flawed reasoning there because it doesn't, whether or not being gay is a choice is not relevant to the discussion here. What matters is whether we have the free will choice to engage in homosexual acts and we do so it is clearly a gross misrepresentation to call homosexual acts unconsensual sex and this is really important to make a distinction with because if having homosexual sex wasn't our free will choice then god would no longer be just but because it is our choice to engage in homosexual acts God can justly hold us accountable for our actions. And like, I've always wondered too, and I want to hear what you think in the comments, like, do you think that this kind of street preaching is actually effective? Like, I'm looking at this and, okay, some of the stuff that the street preachers say, it's kind of offensive and it can really peeve people off. But at the same time, like, if, if it even reaches one person and really plants a seed in their mind, I think it's worth it. But again, I want to hear what you think. I want to hear what you think about all of this. Let's have a really respectful discussion down below. And if you enjoyed this video, you want to watch a video, like it. I'm going to put one on screen right about here. Very similar. With that being said, have a great day. Bye-bye.